So, keeping the mathematical rigor in constant, in constancy, let's just quickly show this formula and there's a very quick way to do that. I'll start off from here, okay? I think I better remove this away. So, I'll start off from here. We let z equals to the thing above there, r cosine theta plus i sine theta. That's fine. Okay, and then we let w equals to s cosine phi plus i sine phi. Okay? And then later, that means when we take this w to the power of n, it will be simply n over here, it will be n over here, and then we will have n over here. Okay, basically, yes, these two numbers multiply with each other. So, this whole thing, the power of n, I can bring the n down, and I can bring the n down over here. Okay, then now, Sn is the magnitude of the complex number Z, w to the power of n, and then, now, by the Morbius theorem, which we have shown time and time again, that we can bring cosine down, n phi plus i sine phi, n phi. We're just simply applying the Morbius theorem right here, bringing the n inside here and the n inside here. Okay, so this is Wn. Okay, so now what do we know? Well, we know that we're trying to establish this. That means we're going to equate these two equations together because in that way, we can somehow find the the value of W or at least find the value of the magnitude of W from here and from here comparing with the complex number to begin with. Remember, two complex numbers are equal if the magnitudes are the same and if the arguments are the same. So, R cosine theta plus I sine theta is equal to Sn cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay, all said and done. So, magnitude, very easy. r, so r equals to s to the power n. The, all these, we are just equating complex number z to w to the power of n, just like what we want to do. And then it gives us this. So, s now becomes r to the power of 1 over n. Okay, and then Okay, this is cosine theta is equals to cosine n phi. Now, at this point of time, you are very tempted to put cosine is equals to n phi. However, we know that about trigonometry identities that this would equal each other if this number here is a multiple of 2 pi. Because like I said, for the sine and cosine graph, the period is 2 pi. So, n phi plus 2 pi doesn't, doesn't make a difference to the thing. Likewise, n phi plus 4 pi. So we can write that theta is equal, sorry, we do it the other way. We can write n phi is equal to theta plus 2 k pi, where k is an integer. Let's just put positive for now. Okay, and switching it over, n equals to theta plus 2k pi divided by n. Okay, so we've got the value of phi, we've got the value of s. This, like I explained again, comes from equating these two numbers together. We are equating the magnitude, equating the argument, and this is what we get. So, from there, we can just immediately write the complex number w, because we defined it as the magnitude is r to the power of 1 over n, followed by cosine the argument which is this, theta plus 2k pi over n plus i, likewise for the sine function. Mm, yeah. Okay, there we go. Where k is equal to 0, 1, 2, and minus 1. Very quickly, on the graph, complex plane of that, what do we get? Okay. What we get is a unit circle, sorry, not a unit circle, we get a circle of the same, le same magnitude, which is going to be r to the power of 1 over n, and this points, because the points represent w1, 
the number of points that we got around the circle would be the number of n over here. Why do I say that? Because if w, if the nth roots of w, let's just say z is equal to w to the power of 4, we showed you just now that there would be four solutions. Okay? And these four solutions, interestingly enough, ap appears on the circle with the magnitude r to the power of 1 over n. So, having four solutions around that circle, it's only logical to think that the argument between them is simply 360 or 2 pi divided by 4, which in this case is pi over 4, which would be like that. And it is a right angle. W1, W2, W3, W4 are uh, separated by a right angle towards each other. And all these represent the nth roots of Z. So there we go. That is what we call the n roots of a complex number showing uh, via De Morbius theorem, proving by De Morbius theorem, some comparing real parts, imaginary parts, and to show that they, are, they appear on a circle with the radius r to the power 1 over n. Let's solve some problems using what we know.